Oh well, would you look at that. The most ominous time of the year has finally arrived. Halloween, or as only the most sophisticated and cultured know it as instead, Nightmare Night. However, if you actually think about it though, the Nightmare Night holiday was really only ever featured in one episode of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, the season 2 episode Luna Eclipsed. But hey, that's beside the point, because what I want to talk about in this video actually briefly appears in this episode. Bat Ponies If you have ever been active in the online My Little Pony space in general, then there is a fairly likely chance you have seen at least a few pieces of artwork of something like a Bat Pony OCs. Over the years, the fandom has created a lot of stuff involving them, which are all mostly inspired from the few times we see ones in the actual show, and sometimes other stuff like the comics. If you didn't know, there are also technically two different types of bat ponies that were introduced in the show. Regular bat ponies and also vampire bat ponies. The fandom has been using both of them for a long time now, but a few big characteristics they both share are obviously their bat wings in place of normal pony wings, and also other things like their fangs and tufted ears. Tons of fan-made stuff has been created over the past decade or so featuring bat ponies, but have you ever wondered where, why, or even when did the My Little Pony fandom's sort of obsession with them even begin in the first place? Something like this definitely doesn't become popular overnight in a community, so if you have, then you're in luck, because today, to celebrate the Halloween slash Nightmare Night spirit, I'm going to be taking a deepish dive and closer look at Bat Ponies, not only in official My Little Pony stuff itself, but also in the fandom. As I mentioned a moment ago, the story of Bat Ponies pretty much starts back in October of 2011, when the MOP FIM episode Luna Eclipsed premiered on the hub for the first time. In the beginning half of the episode, as Luna arrives in Ponyville on a flying chariot, the two royal guards escorting her in this scene look a bit different from any other royal guards, or really ponies in general, seen in the show up to this point. They appear to be like a hybrid between ponies and bats. So, after Luna Eclipsed premiered, and after MOP fans alike, of course got done freaking out about the Princess Luna having her own episode, a lot of people began to turn their attention to these two ponies. Luna doesn't explain who they are or anything, and they just kinda disappear for the rest of the episode, so naturally a lot of questions started to be asked. Were these two a part of some special secret royal guard unit made up entirely of what appeared to be these bat and pony hybrids? Were these two actually just normal pony pegasi wearing silly costumes for the sake of Nightmare Night? Or were they even any type of pony at all? Due to the very ambiguous nature of who they were or where they even came from, Tons of questions like these were, and still kinda are to this day, asked. Aside from them being Luna's gods, basically everything else about them was up to quite heavy speculation and interpretation. So, as a result of this, some people quickly began coming up with their own headcanons and lore. The term Bat Pony was coined around this time, and unofficial fan-made canons about them started to take shape as well. As a notable example, in 2012, some people began speculating that bat ponies may have originated from the Everfree Forest, but eventually migrated to several other miscellaneous locations in Equestria. 
In addition to things like that, a few people, of course, also got inspired to begin designing their own bat pony OCs around this time as well. With the first known bat pony OC, named Midnight Blossom, having been created in early 2012. These two things were really only the beginning though, as throughout the following years, from 2012 to 2015, bat ponies would become increasingly more and more popular within the My Little Pony fandom. People started making more stuff, like artwork of bat pony OCs, fan fictions involving bat ponies, and even other things like full-on animations featuring them. It's worth saying this wasn't all for no reason though, as a good number of this increased interest in bat ponies during this time can actually be attributed to them being officially recognized both in and outside of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic by the show staff working on it. Examples of this include a few newer episodes of the show actually showing more bat ponies, namely Season 3, Episode 7, Bats, where Twilight casts a spell turning Fluttershy into a vampire bat pony obsessed with eating apples, and Season 5, Episode 26, The Cutie Remark Part 2, where a few of them, including what appears to be a bat pony version of Rainbow Dash, can be seen in an alternate timeline where Nightmare Moon is ruling over Equestria. And additionally, they also make numerous miscellaneous cameos in several issues of the IDW comics. Most notably though in the Night of the Living Apples storyline, where the main six all briefly torn into vampire bat ponies in order to defend Ponyville from a bunch of sentient apples. Crazy I know. It still wasn't really explained what or where exactly they came from in any of these new appearances, but bat ponies just showing up again at all and being acknowledged was nevertheless more than enough to shine a brighter spotlight on them in the fandom. Another interesting instance of bat ponies being officially recognized was also in August of 2013, when Lauren Faust, the literal creator of MOPFIM, provided some of her own lore about bat ponies in a Twitter back and forth with one of the show's writers, M.A. Lawson. As she explains here, during the process of conceptualizing them, she apparently had in mind that bat ponies were a completely different race of ponies, and also thought that they originated from quote-unquote deep caves inside the mountains, and they nowadays guard Princess Luna's palace. Whether or not you want to take what she said here on Twitter as a 100% canon explanation is up to you, but either way, you have to admit it's pretty interesting. The idea of Luna recruiting a bunch of reclusive pony-bat hybrids literally living in caves to guard her palace goes quite well with her overall introverted or enigmatic dark vibe that a lot of people in the MLP fandom were very obsessed with around this time. So, as such, these Lauren Frost tweets definitely helped pique more interest in bat ponies in general. By the way, one kind of funny thing I found is how only a few months after this twiddle back and forth, the previously mentioned M.A. Lawson officially revealed his own pony sona, Shoppy Fume. And as you can see, it is a bat pony. So who knows, he might have been inspired to make his one after the interaction with Lauren Faust, which I think goes to exemplify how even back in 2013, bat ponies had a pretty big notable presence in the MLP fandom. Aside from that though, one more notable example of bat ponies being officially acknowledged was in November of 2015, 
when a My Little Pony book collection about the Alicorn Princesses was released. Within the one primarily about Luna, named Princess Luna and the Festival of the Winter Moon, it's revealed that when she was younger, she had at one point apparently resolved a conflict between a colony of mountain dragons and a settlement of bat ponies living in deep underground caves, successfully establishing peace between the two. Which, bat pony stuff aside for a second, I must say that sounds incredibly cool, and is yet another reason why she's the best princess. Additionally, it's also said here that the two bat pony royal gods we briefly see in Luna Eclipsed are apparently named Echo and Nocturne. A while after Luna settled the conflict between the dragons and bat ponies, she apparently found the two of them being harassed by a rogue dragon. And when she saved them, they were so grateful for her help that they offered to serve as her royal guards forever afterwards. Which is why we eventually see the two of them for a few moments in that episode. It's of course worth noting, however, that this book was written by G.M. Barrow well after Lunar Eclipse first aired in 2011, but it does line up with what Lauren Faust apparently had in mind fairly well, and also provides another small, but still nice official acknowledgement and also sort of origin story for Bat Ponies. It isn't much, but honestly, these two sources are the closest things we'll ever get to any actual canon lore behind the Bat Ponies, so I guess we might as well embrace it. These examples of Bat Ponies being shown and even slightly explored more in an official capacity really did bring them more into the broader spotlight of the My Little Pony community. Like I said earlier, the newfound attention inspired a lot of people to make all sorts of fan works like art and animations featuring bat ponies, which all helped make them even more well known in the process. That being said, in terms of actual official recognition and stuff, that's pretty much it. Bat ponies never appeared in MLP Friendship is Magic again after season 5 and not much else notable was shown or said about them outside of the show in stuff like other books or by people working on it. Which is honestly sort of a shame if you ask me. I feel like there could have been a lot more pretty cool stuff done with bat ponies and whatnot. But hey, we still did officially get bat pony rainbow dash in the show, so at least there's that. However, despite them not really being acknowledged much after 2015, the legacy of Bat Ponies is of course still nowadays carried on by the various pieces of fan-made media involving them. I mentioned it a bit ago, but there are a fair amount of MLP fan animations and whatnot that feature Bat Ponies. Probably the most significant of which being the several ones made by the popular My Little Pony in Real Life video creator Storm XF3. If you've been watching pony stuff on YouTube for a while, you might have some nostalgia for this guy's videos in general, but he has made several different videos starring a bat pony OC named Echo who was, fun fact, actually one of the first Bat Pony OCs to ever be created in about 2013. These videos are usually about her stealing and eating fruit, specifically mangoes, and in total they have over 85 million combined views, which makes Echo easily the most widely well-known Bat Pony OC out there, and maybe even Pony OC in general too which is pretty fascinating to see. These types of animations, among a few other things like fan art in general, have really helped maintain the status of Bat Ponies as being a very memorable and distinct part of the My Little Pony fandom over the years. In a way, I believe they're actually quite representative of the mentality the MLPG4 community, especially in its earlier days, had towards often filling in the blanks 
when it came to more unexplored or ambiguous aspects of the show, creating their own collective headcanons or theories in the process. Prime examples of this are things like background ponies that almost never actually speak in the show, being given whole fleshed out personalities by the fandom, people coming up with elaborate origin stories for villains, and of course, bat ponies appearing for like less than a minute in one episode, and then shortly afterwards becoming sort of a phenomenon in the fandom. This type of collective world building by fans was quite widespread, particularly during MOPG4's heyday of popularity from the early to mid 2010s. And I think Bat Ponies are another great example of the fandom's creativity. The show introduced them, but I feel like it's probably safe to say the fans are truly what made them more memorable through all the cool stuff they created featuring them. With that said, it is sort of a shame that nowadays, the writers of the MOPG5 shows have seemingly forgotten about most non-regular pony species or races, including bat ponies. Who knows, maybe they returned to hiding in their caves or whatever. But even with that in mind, I still think it's cool to look back on the fairly small but nevertheless interesting mark they have left on the My Little Pony slash Brony fandom. And despite Bat Ponies mostly only having brief appearances in the show itself and stuff like the comics, it looks like they will continue to live on in the fandom for quite a long time to come. So, in conclusion, Bat Ponies aren't exactly the most important or groundbreaking part of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, but I think it's safe to say they're definitely among the most memorable. Mostly for directly inspiring tons of people over the years to make cool looking OCs, animations, or even fanfictions and headcanons. So, with that all now finally said, Happy Halloween, and thanks for watching this deepish dive slash closer look into Bat Ponies. Well, you're now here at the outro, so why don't you comment down below your own personal thoughts or memories about Bat Ponies in general. As I said in the video, Bat Ponies don't really have a lot of official concrete lore, and they're also a pretty fascinating small aspect of MLP and the fandom itself. So, it would be awesome to see what you all have to say about them. This video was slightly on the shorter side, but I do have some other cool stuff for the channel being cooked up, so stay tuned. With that said though, you can also do all the normal stuff, like sharing this video around and whatnot, as that's an amazing way to support me. But aside from that, I believe that's all I really have to say right now. So, like always, I will see you whenever I see you.